I can't even lie to you lot. It's always great when Arsenal win games, people. And I'm still in a boyish, boisterous kind of mood after finally getting back to three points. Now, we can't get too excited. The work begins now for Sporting Lisbon, West Ham United, Manchester United, and so on and so forth. But with that being said, people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. It seems that Arsenal are again being linked with a bunch of players. 99% of this is BS, but it allows us to dream. If you allow me to share my screen, we'll get straight on into stuff. Don't forget to smash the like button. Now, I'm tired of seeing us linked with Alexander Rizak. I'm not because he's a quality player. You look at the Sackers, the Odegaards, the Salibas, you know, the list goes on. Adding Isaac to that kind of mix and that kind of bunch of players would be amazing. Whether we're going to find the money to buy him, I don't know. Arsenal clearly need a striker. He clearly fits the billing. There's probably contract stuff going on at, at um Newcastle. I don't think we're signing a man in January. So that for me rules out the Kudasis, the Isaacs, the Jokeres, etc. etc. But you know, Sky Germany have said, as revealed in our show a few days ago, Arsenal are monitoring the situation surrounding Alexander Isaac. The 25-year-old Newcastle striker is on their list alongside other options. Much will depend on who succeeds Edu. Contract of Isaac valued until 2028. So he's contracted until 2028. Big money, you know, that's what, four years, give or, give or take three years come next year in a couple of weeks, people. Big money going to be needed from It's as simple as that. Would love the guy at the carpet, but I think that's where we're at with him. Arsenal allegedly have emerged as one of the main suitors for AC Milan midfielder Tijani Rangers. I would love him. I think we need that skill set. Clearly looks happy at AC Milan. Did he not sign a new deal? And he's probably going to cost something stupid. Now, apologies for that. We know we probably need a midfielder between January or in the summer or midfielders because you've got Declan Rice. Mikel Moreno is going to be here long term. Thomas Partey, don't know if he signs a new deal or stays beyond this campaign. There's been radio silence with that. Jorginho's gone. And I think with everybody fit, I think we could do with another midfielder. And for me, the skill set, he's, he's obviously can defend and do all of that stuff. But his skill set in midfield is probably more based around... In the, in the opposition's half versus we've got a lot of dual winners and box winners and, and, and monsters and things of that ilk. We need a bit more than that, people. So I'd be for it, but I can't see it happening. This is said Arsenal could offer an astronomical fee to land the AC Milan midfielder. So astronomical fee. So let's just, what is that? That's 70, 80, 90, 100. And the same goes for Isaac. The same goes for Kudus and half these players. And I guess you can do scouting and things like that, people, and find players all over, whether they cost 10 million or 100 million. But uh, allow me to ask you like this. Do you not feel we're at that stage now where we need to probably buy a couple of players with a big price tag just because it seems like they're the difference makers? Allegedly, Chelsea have joined Arsenal in the race for Izzet, but Newcastle will demand at least £115 million for the 25-year-old striker. Uh, Arsenal are ready to pounce. You know, Mikel Arteta could capitalise on that. For me, it'd be lovely. you got Mikel Moreno, you got Odegaard, the number 14 shirt is free. Um, what else have we got? The 14 shirts free, love scoring against Spurs, he's Premier League proven. There's so much to like about the lad. Are we really going to keep talking about Zubamendi? I think we are. Sociedad feel powerless to stop Martin Zubamendi from leaving with Arsenal and Liverpool both eager to sign the midfielder who is valued at 50 million. Um, What's this? Again, Osman Diamande, who was linked with us in his days at Denmark, and that's followed him since he signed for Sport in Lisbon. According to a report from Court of Side, Manchester United are ahead of Arsenal and Chelsea in the race to sign the 20-year-old. Now, Chelsea need a defender. We could do with another. Man United, I think, I I'll think keep saying it. I think out of all the sporting players that could move on, I think he's the first one Ruben Amarin has to bring in. He's got an 80 million release clause. It's fair to say we're not going to do that. Carlo Ancelotti has stressed that he'll be counting on Arda Galer this season. He Obviously, finally got some minutes at the weekend. Arsenal, Liverpool, Napoli, Juventus even. Everybody apparently is monitoring the young Turkish international's future owing to a lack of football. We've also been linked with Konya of Wolves, which I'm happy to see there's a new name for once. Arsenal should explore deal for Wolves start in January. Um, apparently, people. I mean, would you not have him? I would not be against it. Apparently, he's valued at 44 million. I don't think he's a difference maker, but I think he's versatile. Good skillers. Degree of Premier League prove provenness, I guess, if that makes sense. I'm all for it. I don't really think he's a difference maker like that, but you could argue, is he any better or worse than Trossard or Martinelli, which might not be the most sensible way to go about things, but I certainly wouldn't be against it. Can't see it happening in the Wolves. Um, can't see us buying the lad from Wolves in January. 
Uh, Victor Jokerez has rejected offers from both Arsenal and Manchester United, according to reports or sensational reports in Spain. Now, Swedish player playing in a Portuguese club linked with two British clubs. Why is the primary emerging news out of Spain? It's easy to link teams with Jokerez. As you know, the 26-year-old, whether they go for him or not, a lot of people will be on the radar. Of, he'll be on the radar of a lot of teams. And, you know, when you're getting 41 goal contributions in 25 games for club and country so far this campaign, we would love that at the carpet, people. And to be fair, make sure you're here for my sport in Lisbon, Arsenal, watch along because we'll be seeing him firsthand what he's about now. We saw what they did against City. Hopefully that's not us. Apparently he's rejected offers and he could become a top target for Barcelona. Didn't Deco say... Any talk of us going for Jokerez, us being Barca for this example, are wide of the mark. I'm not too sure, people. But read into that what you will. Arsenal set to rival Manchester United and Newcastle United for a striker. Kulamani, not convinced with him, but we've been linked with him because he's struggling for game time at PSG. And evidently, he fits the billing in. We need a striker. And now, what would be the priority in, the, in, the, in January? Because you could argue we need another centre mid. You could argue maybe you need someone that can deputise for Martin Odegaard. A winger and a striker, both would be ideal. But would you rather an inside forward? Like if you had a Sadio Mane on the left to go with Sacco, or would you go for Isaac or whatever in January? I'm not too sure, people. January is a difficult time to do business. I I'm pretty sure by the time I finish this live stream, we're probably going to get linked with Nico Williams. Uh, going back over Arda Galea, Aston Villa, AC Milan, Juventus will battle it out with Arsenal for Arda Galea, with Real Madrid now understood to be open to letting him leave on loan. Surely you let him go to a lower club in Spain before you go to the Villas, the AC Milan, Juventus, because it's not clear. He's got all the ability in the world. It's not clear you're going to get mad first-team football. I think you get a lot of games at Arsenal, but it's not clear that you're going to get X amount of starts and, and the game time you need. Keeping up the theme with Real Madrid, I'm having Diaz of, of Real Madrid. Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs all have offers already on the table as they compete for the signing of Diaz from Real Madrid. I don't believe half of this, people. Uh, it hasn't really worked out for Evan Ferguson at the moment at Brighton, but Chelsea remain fans of him and they still in Brighton's case are demanding 100 million he's a player we're getting linked with or have been linked with so I wouldn't imagine that goes away Vlahovic who has been linked with Arsenal is one of Barcelona's top targets to replace Lewandowski on a long term basis Bayern Munich are doing all they can to persuade Kimmich not to leave on a free transfer in the summer Real Madrid and Manchester City have also been linked and a few months ago we was uh, West Ham are interested in signing Evan Ferguson on loan people I mean his price has dropped could that be something for us Arsenal allegedly will turn down any approaches from Real Madrid for Saliba both in January and next summer. And we have heard rumours about a new contract for Ethan, Saliba, Bakayo Saka. Let's hope we get a move on and we actually confirm that they stay at the carpet, people. Uh, Arsenal leading chase for brilliant young Spanish talent with six goals and assists in 12 games this season. Is this the new guy? Oh, it's Antonio Cordero. Cordero, I can't pronounce his name. The Malaga 18-year-old is a Spain under-19s international. Apparently, his market value is just 2 million euros. You, unless there's, there's a release clause for that, do we really buy that? Of course, there could be a market opportunity. You sign a man for 2 million, you hope he goes and be a star for the club. But if you buy him for 2 million and he turns into 50 million... And he's not quite that that good. Keep it moving. And you're definitely not going to sell him for two million. Where if this is true, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Juventus, PSG, City, United, Aston Villa, as well as Arsenal, pr pure Premier League teams and, and powerhouses in Europe all sniffing around him. It wouldn't make sense, would it, people? Slot is still being linked with Zuba Mendy as I went over, people. Um, Chris Wig, Wig, Chris Rigg, apologies, tongue tied there. Spurs and Arsenal are looking at the Sunderland. Um, midfielder and to be fair Sunderland are making a good run at things trying to get promotion to the Premier League and I rate it because they've got a young squad uh he's 17 years of age people for me and he's got three goals and 15 appearances I just think in today's day and age it's there's too much of a rush to be a young talented player and move on you're getting game time how many 17 year olds are out there actively in a professional league playing week in week out a key player minutes are currency at 17 years of age with all your quality and all these teams monitoring you the move will happen that being said if there's capacity for Arsenal to sign him and loan him back I'm all for that people 100% and we've again we've been linked with Antonio Cordero the 18 year old Malaga international people so Malaga international Malaga player and Spain um, under 19s international probably need to get some tactical videos out for you in that regards and we'll go over them with that being said though let 
me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Again, make sure your notification bells are on because whether it's the BS transfer news, Arsenal shows, watch alongs, you know I've got you covered. And I mentioned sport in Lisbon against Arsenal tomorrow. I think we kick off at 8pm UK time. So come and join me from 7pm. Big up you lot that was part of my Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest watch along. I think we had a good laugh there. So yeah, you lot stay, take care, stay blessed. Make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 70k. Peace.